Hello and welcome back to our AI series in episode 10. In this episode, we're taking a look at nav mesh modifiers. These modifiers allow us to change the nav mesh and its costs for the AI to use. This allows us to create some more unique, interesting things with our nav mesh. So let's take a look at how to set these up and how to make your own as well. So welcome back to our AI series. And so we're going to start off with the nav area modifiers and talk about those and how to use them. So a nav mesh, as we previously discussed, is this green thing that you see here when you push the P key on your keyboard. And this is generated by the computer um, and is what the AI uses to know what they can and cannot navigate. So if it's all connected and they're inside that same island of green, they can walk to that position. Now, the way it does this is that this nav mesh is actually split up into a load of little grids. And we can actually preview this in our project settings. We can turn this on. So if I go down to nav mesh here, I can draw the poly edges here. And also show the poly costs as well. And you can see here how this works. Now, obviously, we've got a lot of objects in our scene here breaking up the grid. But hopefully you can see that grid working here. We've got a big grid here with nothing in it. And then we've got to see how it gets divided up as each object is added to each grid. And you also see these labels on it. And so look, look at this label here, cost default fixed at one. So this means that to travel through this grid space, it costs them one, okay? Now that comes in very important when dealing with nav, esh, nav mesh modifiers, as a modifier can change this cost. And it changes this cost in a way where it can make it more or less expensive for it to travel through that making it more or less enticed to use that as the route. So, for example, let's look at some built-in nav mesh modifiers that we have. So we go up to the, uh, the quickly add to project button up here, we go down to volumes, and you'll see nav modifier volume. We can drag this out and place that into our scene. So the way this works is that we go over here to the right hand side and you'll see uh, somewhere in here. Oh, I put the wrong one in. Uh, let's try it again. Volumes, nav mesh modifier. There we go. Um, it's all down here. You see area class. Now, the default one is set to null, which basically means it just cuts out that space. It means that no matter what, you can never, ever walk through that. Okay, so if you've got an obstacle that you want the AI to always avoid, you can put this in. This is especially useful when you're doing things with like invisible walls or other things like that you want to stop AI from traveling into, maybe like safe zones, for example. Uh, it's very useful for those sort of things. But let's take a look at some of the other options here. So on the right hand side, you'll see area class. We can click on this and you choose one of the other pre-built ones we have in here. So nav area default is the green one that you're used to seeing. Low height indicates this area is of low height. So if the agent is short enough, they can still go through this. And that is you identifying um, what part is uh, counts as low height and what doesn't count as low height. Very useful if your AI can crouch or you have shorter AI that can navigate different areas than the other AI. Not many games do this, I've noticed, um, but it is there if you want to do it. We also have null, which you've seen, and then we have obstacle. Now, obstacle is an interesting one. So what obstacle does is it increases the cost of this area. So you can see here the cost for this is now, what's that, 1 million? 1, 2, 3, yeah. 1 million. So that's an extremely expensive area to cross over. Now, that means that it won't cross it unless there is no other alternative. So, for example, if I was to stretch this out to cover this map like so, and play the game and get him to chase me, and if I walk over here, because I'm on the other side of this nav area, he won't go through it. He'll go around it. Okay. And if I were to now stretch this across the whole width of the thing, because there is no other route to me, he must use it. So therefore, he can use it. So if we go through here, he'll just come straight through. Because no, there is no alternative. Okay, that is the cheapest route. Uh, the difference with null is that means he cannot navigate that at all. So he'll chase me to a point, and then he won't be able to. 
Okay. There you go. And he'll go back to his routine. So that is what nav mesh modifiers do. Now you can actually create your own nav mesh modifier as well. Because sometimes you may think, okay, I want an obstacle, but I don't want it to be that expensive. Okay, so for example, you may want to do something where they have this obstacle they have to avoid. Um, but um, if it is cheaper for them to go through it um, than it is to walk around it, we want to do that. So, for example, we're going to start creating our own modifier. Now, to do this, we're going to go into our Blueprint class and search for all classes, nav, and you'll see nav area. You'll see nav area as the base class there, nav area. Click select. And we name it whatever we want. So nav area, um, I don't know, minor obstacle. And they're very easy to set up. You just go inside of it. And then on the right hand side, you'll see the default cost for the area. How much is the cost to enter the area, which is zero by default for all these things. So you could make it so it is expensive to, uh, once you go, to go through it um, when you, as soon as you enter. Um, but once you're in it, then it don't cost anything. So draw color, we can change this default here to be whatever you like. So if I want it to be like a light blue, I can change that to be like that. And you've also got supported agents, which is set to all, because there is only there, there is no uh, setup yet in here for different agent types. So we can hit save on that. And I drag, um, I'm gonna drag another one of these out. Another volume. And this volume here, I can assign my new nav area to it. So minor obstacle. So let me, oh, there we go. Did it not save? Hold on, let's make sure it's saved. Compile, save. That should be showing blue. Why is it not showing blue? It might be because it's not. I haven't changed the cost of it. Let me change the cost of it. So it's set to one, which is obviously the default. If I change it to point, uh, like one point, uh, let's do two. Let's do two. So it's double the cost of all for it. There you go. Yeah. So if it's the same cost, it won't show. Um. So that is now a cost of two to go through. This is a cost of one million, and obviously the green is a cost of one. So if I was to run over here. He would either, go, we'll see if he goes for the blue or will he go the whole distance to go through the green. So let's take a look. So he sees me. I run over to this corner. Remember, the blue is just there. And that's it, it's crossed it. So he determined that that was actually a uh, shorter, quicker, less costly distance across than, say, going around this way. So let's test that again. A little bit further. So this time I'm not going to hide behind the red one. We'll go a little bit further, like inland, up here. Still cheap, okay? And that's because two is quite low. Um, so if we change that to say ten, now I don't think it's going to cost him more than ten to go the long way around. I think he'll be fine. So I think he'll just go the long way around because it'll be technically cheaper. But we'll see. So it's going a long way around because it's technically cheaper than 10. So a lot of it takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what numbers work best for what you need. Um, but some good examples for putting things like this on are for obstacles that you want to be dynamic because a nav area modifier can be fixed, but it can also be set to be dynamic. So let's say, for example, you want to start a fire. Okay. Um, let's take that out here. And let's say we want to start a fire. So let's create a fire actor. So, and let's add a particle effect to this one that comes with the default starter kit. So, cascade one fire. Wait for that to compile. There we are. And I want to set up the nav area for this. Now, the way you add a nav area to this is you can add a nav area if you want, like nav modifier. Uh, if you add a nav modifier, what that does, it takes all cloudable objects as part of that object and makes them follow that nav modifier.
but you can also do it per object. So for example, I can add a sphere collision to this. And on, on its collision settings over here, just so search for nav. And you'll see dynamic obstacle. I'm going to turn that on. And we're going to tell it to not use the default obstacle area. Turn that off. And we're going to change that to um, obstacle. Okay. So now, if that is added to our scene, it will add a red spot to the nav grid. So if I drag it in, you can see the red spot there. Meaning that they'll walk around it. So this will only work if we make the mesh dynamic because let's first of all make it so I can spawn it in. I can show you what I mean. So if I go to here and we push uh, the one key, we'll spawn a fire at our feet. So spawn actor from class, we'll choose the fire and we'll get the spawn transform of the mesh. We'll go get world transform and plug it into there and we want to always spawn ignoring collisions so if i were to drop this in and get chased by him leave a file for he'll still walk through it um that's because the default setting for a nav mesh is to be static completely static so meaning that once it's baked into the level at the start of the game when you push play that's it is so if you were to add obstacles to it such as what we just did nothing will change now nav modifiers you can make it so it's dynamic for modifiers you go to product settings go down to navigation mesh i believe it's in this one if not it's in another one. no there you go runtime generation it says static you can change this to dynamic modifiers only so we click on this and now when you're chasing after me i'll leave fire on the floor it goes around it, which is pretty cool. Yep, he's dynamically deciding what he can and can't walk through. So I can just set fires for him, and he'll weed his way through the fires, or well, he's lost sight of me, <laughs> or he and so forth. Um, it's a pretty neat trick he can do. This works very well for things like fire, um, other obstacles too. So if you want to leave traps for people, um, they can look for the trap and see it and avoid it like that as well um, and that's really it for nav modifiers um nav modifiers can be turned off and on but as long as they are turned on to dynamic so if you've got things like fire you want to put out you can make it put out and therefore it will clear up that nav mesh again for you so you can start thinking of ways you could incorporate this into your nav area design for example making crossings for roads or uh, fires or water or other things like that to get in their way and there you go, we have now added nav mesh modifiers to our scene. We now have to use them and we can incorporate them into our projects if we so need to. In the next episode, we're going to go through how to use nav link proxies. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find more about my videos early before anyone else with just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support with me and the channel. And thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.